this one more over there. Okay. Um, I want to begin by congratulating Kwang Peng. I think his, his lecture has uh, lived up to my expectations of clarity, critical thinking, and eloquence. Um, one of the takeaways from this lecture is that Singapore society has changed. The young people feel empowered. I think they want to be governed with a lighter touch than your generation and mine. In view of this, do you think the decision by MDA recently to ban to Singapore with love is not in keeping with the kind of light touch governance that we expect to see? You want me to answer that question also? <laughs> Tommy, would you like Jenna to, to answer that question also? Um, I, actually, I, I felt this was really a missed opportunity um, on the part of the government because, and I haven't seen the movie, I've only seen snippets of it uh, on YouTube. The snippets I saw were of really aging people in Thailand, elsewhere, who may have really posed a threat to Singapore by being hardcore communists. But clearly, they were rather sad people today. And my sense is that if the government had not just banned it, but in fact welcomed it and screened it and used it as an opportunity to educate Singaporeans, that there was a hard, ruthless struggle for the soul of Singapore. Some people won, some people lost. Those who lost are not to be treated badly. They believed in what they sought to do. But most importantly, the sense I think any Singaporean would have if they watched that movie, if you trust Singaporeans, is the same sense that when our government many years ago allowed us to go to China. Remember many years they did not allow us to go to China because they thought we would then be duped into communists. What happened when we went to China was that we sensed an empathy for Chinese culture. But when we came back to Singapore, we were ultra grateful for the society that we live in. And I think this could have been a great opportunity for younger Singaporeans to recognize that the people who are out there as exiles, they're not terrible people. They believed in their cause. But, but we would, younger Singaporeans would have understood that it is so fortunate that the PAP won. Because the system that we live under today for all its faults would have been much better than the system that would have existed if they had won. It would have been a system of Cuba. It would have been Vietnam. So we missed an opportunity by simply saying that these were self-serving people. We all know they're not threats to Singapore anymore. They are self-serving. Who would not be self-serving? But at the same time, are Singaporeans not, I guess, educated, mature enough to recognize that the battle for the whole soul of Singapore was won by the people who should have won. And they won. And be magnanimous enough to let this be a teaching exercise. So I found it unfortunate because it could have, I think, even made younger Singaporeans realize what actually happened. And by banning it on the grounds of being self-serving means that we have to postpone the period of education and of history being really, I mean, history will have to be rewritten. And I think when history is rewritten and Operation Cold Store is examined and everything else, history will still come to the conclusion that the battle was won by those who should have won. And we do not need to write the history every line and chapter. Let it be enough room for others who may be self-serving to say their piece. So I found it unfortunate because I think it would actually have helped to illustrate the reality of what the PAP went through and how they made the right decision. And the battle that Lee Kuan Yew had to fight was a real battle with real people that are not just in history books. I think we have questions for time for three questions.